All right, this week, uh, on uh, respect the process. Uh, oh, wait said, a minute, he's don't... back. You don't have music, do you? No. Nah. Yeah, we need some respect the process. Music. Yes, we do. My bad. Go ahead. Respect. respect. I mean, you, I got it. I just ain't. I just ain't whipped it out. Yeah, you gotta bring it to me. Nah, but uh, this week uh, I got. I, I text this. I think I, I think I posted it, but I said, uh, "What men learn from history is that men don't learn from history." Mm. Damn. AKA, do not place your hope in a better world due to the efforts of man and government. Mm -hmm. The world has fallen multiple times over millennia and will continue until death, sin, and evil are permanently quarantined from the earth. The Bible records multiple accounts of great civil civ civilizations Hallelujah. rising and falling throughout history. Even the nation of Israel, God's chosen people and nation. Just think about all the supernatural things the children of God have seen and witnessed mm -hmm. in God and turned their back on God. Over and right. over and over walked again. Walked you out of... the the God walked Israel out of Egypt and it says that there was not one feeble body. Yeah, mm. yeah. walked them out holding their hand. <laughs> With riches. Yeah, right. And, and, and goods. And cattle. And cattle. And clothes. Right. A seed was split. A seed was split. A pillar of fire by night. A pillar of smoke by day. Quail every night. You get in the will. Right. Ma manna. Manna is the perfect <laughs> food. Just read Genesis. Mm. Then go to Exodus. Then go to Leviticus. Turn down mad. your L all, voice. All, yeah. all, all these I like, was mad and got in the wilderness and turned it and said, got in the wilderness and said, I want to go back to Egypt. At least we had some somebody heard stadium speaker voice of God. And when there wasn't studios or stadium speakers. And turned their back on God. We saw Babylon fall. We saw uh, all of the great civilizations, all the empires fall, fall every single time. Every single time it never fails. And every single time man wants to uh, resurrect this idea of, oh, this will work this time that hasn't worked 30 million times in the past. Yeah, but we're gonna get it to work. Socialism has never worked, but you know what? Aha, aha! Right. Democratic socialism is different. It's like, nah, fool, it ain't gonna work. It don't never work. Let's make flesh great again. Let's. Ooh, <laughs> let's That's make, what they doing. <laughs> no, every single every time. time. Let's Amen. Make flesh. Amen. That was nice. Let's, yeah. let's make flesh great again. The greatest that is what deception. The, that's the Man. world's that's the greatest slogan. Deception. Yeah, wow. the greatest deception. So, no and, good. And, and and I mean you. I mean, and even when you go down to King David, a man, uh, uh, he loved God, but he was a wild dude at times. He was falling. Solomon, the wisest man, dabbled in all kinds of sorcery and married all the and. and and he get to the book of Ecclesiastes and be like, man, it's all oh, vanity. Wow. They don't mean nothing. I built the the most beautiful buildings. I did. I got the greatest statues. I got the parks. Man, they said. Just they, to leave it to another wicked man. They said, they, they said Solomon's worth riches in today's time will be equal to $4 trillion. Yes. Liquid. No man, no one man has had four trillion dollars. Right. No, not at all. Liquid. He said, "I've done." I, he said, "I've, I've, I've explored uh, passion and desire and and and, and self indulgence as far as the eye can see, mm -hmm. and I'm at the end of my life, 
and it is all vanity. Yeah. What men learn from man is that men don't learn. What men learn from history is that men don't learn from history. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I was while looking up, uh, you know, just thoughts and pieces on this and scripture on this. Um, <laughs> and at the end of what I'm about to lay out, I'm going to lay out the greatest, biggest, stupidest not men not learning from history <sighs> so but while i was looking this up i saw this online and then i also actually found an article on it and it laid out uh the guy who actually wrote it uh the, the eight stages of the rise and fall of civilizations um psychologists no, uh, no my bad sociologists and anthropologists have described the stage the stages and of the rise and fall of the world's great civilization scottish philosopher uh alexander tyler of the university of edinburgh notes eight stages that articulate well what history discloses one from bondage to spiritual growth great civilizations are formed in a cr crucible that's uh like a molding potty a, a pressure cooker mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying uh the ancient jews were in bondage 400 years in egypt the christian faith and the church came out of 300 years of persecution western christendom emerged from the chaotic conflicts during the the, the decline of the roman empire and the movements of the fierce barbarian tribes american culture was formed by the injustices that grew in the colonial times, sufferings and injustices cause even force spiritual growth. Suffering brings wisdom and demands a spiritual discipline that seeks justice and solutions. Two, from spiritual growth to great courage, having been instilled in the crucible of suffering courage and the ability to endure great sacrifice come forth anointed leaders emerge and people are summoned to cur to courage and sacrifice including loss of life in order to create a better more just world for succeeding generations people who have little or nothing also have little or nothing to lose and are often more willing to live for something more important than themselves and their own pleasures a battle is begun a battle requiring courage discipline and other virtues three from courage to liberty as a result of the courageous fight the foe is vanquished and liberty and great justice emerges at this point a civilization comes forth rooted in its great greatest ideals Many who lead the battle are still alive and the legacy of those who are not is still fresh. Heroism and the virtues that brought about liberty are still esteemed. The ideals that were the ideals that were struggled for during the years in the crucible are still largely agreed upon. Four, from liberty to abundance. This where <laughs> this this yeah. Liberty ushers in greater prosperity because the civilization is still functioning with the virtues of sacrifice and hard work. But then comes the first danger, abundance. Things that are in too great an abundance tend to weigh us down and make and take on a and take on a life of their own. At the same time, the struggles that engender wisdom and steal the soul to proper discipline and priorities move to the background. Jesus said that man's life does not consist in his own possessions. But just try to tell, just try to tell that the people in a culture that starts to experience abundance. Such a culture is living on the fumes of earlier sacrifices. Its people become less and less willing to make such sacrifices. Ideals diminish in importance and abundance weighs down the souls of the citizens. The sacrifices, discipline, and virtues responsible, responsible for the thriving of the civilization are increasingly remote from the collective conscience. The enjoyment of their fruits 
becomes the focus. Mm -hmm. Five, from abundance to complacency. Mm. To be complacent means to be self-satisfied and increasingly unaware of serious trends that undermine health, that undermine health and the ability to thrive. Everything looks fine, so it must be fine. Yet found foundations, resources, infrastructures, and necessary virtues are all crumbling. As virtues, discipline, and ideals become even ever more remote, those who raise alarms are labeled by the complacent as killjoys and considered extreme, harsh, or judgmental. Too deep. Sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds just like familiar to familiarity. <laughs> right. Yep. <laughs> Six, from complacency to apathy. The word apathy comes from the Greek and refers to a lack of interest in or passion for the things that once animated and inspired due to the complacency of the previous stage, the growing lack of attention to disturb, uh, disturbing trends advances to outright dismal. Uh, many seldom think or care about the sacrifices of previous generations and lose a sense that they must work for and contribute to the common good. Civilization Civilization Suffers the serious blow of being replaced by personalization and privacitation. I'm I'm killing them. Privacitation in growing degrees. Working and sacrificing for others becomes more remote, growing numbers becoming increasingly willing to live on the carcass of previous sacrifices. Woo! Mm. Living on the carcass of previous sacrifices. Mm -hmm. They park on someone else's dime, but will not fill the parking meter themselves. Mm -hmm. Hard work and self-discipline continue to erode. That's crazy. Word. Seven, from apathy to dependence. Increasing numbers of people lack the virtues wow. and zeal necessary to work yeah, but go ahead. Finish it out. Necessary to work. Oh, increasing numbers of people lack the virtue and zeal necessary to work and contribute. So think about when they, uh, when when the Americas, uh, the United States actually instituted um, the welfare system. Mm -hmm. It made it made poverty go up instead of go down. Yeah, like mm -hmm. people think that welfare is a good thing, and it's like if if. If you live in it properly, then it is. It's, a it's balance. To, it's it's to help you get back on your feet. It's a stepping stool. It's a stepping stone, not, not a, a not a seat. Stay. It's not a seat. Right. Yeah. You people. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Go ahead. So, people are going to struggle. Yeah. Right. And and uh, yeah. yeah. And by love and generosity, let's have a safety net to, net to help people, but not a place for people to stay. Yeah. They, they live. On. They you find their mama inside there, boy. People so set, people <laughs> set up their whole life on it. Yeah. Yeah, since the, the, the suffering, the suffering, and the suffering and the sacrifices that built the culture are now a distant memory. As discipline and work increasingly seem too hard, dependence grows. The collective culture now tips into the direction in the direction of dependence. Suffering from a from suffering from any sort seems intolerable. <laughs> Dang. Even the suffering you put on yourself. It's intolerable. <laughs> I don't deserve it. Uh, but virtue is not seen as the solution. Having lived on the sacrifices of others for years, the civilization mm. now insists that others must solve their woes. Ooh. This ushers in growing demands for governmental collective solutions. This in turn uh, deepens dependence as solutions move from personal virtue and local family-based sacrifices to centralized ones. Eight, from dependence back to bondage. As dependence increases, so does centralized power. Dependent people tend to become increasingly dysfunctional and desperate. Seeking a savior, they look to strong central leadership, but, central pow but centralized power corrupts and tends to usher in increasing intrusion by centralized power, injustice, 
and intrusion and intrusion multiplies but those in bondage know of no other solutions family and personal virt virtues essential ingredients of any civilization are now effectively replaced by an increasingly dark and desp despotic centralized control hunger for more and more power in this way the central the centralization is gradually ended because people in bondage no longer have the virtues necessary to fight. So, in, so I read all that to say, you know what I'm saying? It's a cycle and it keeps going, going, going over. It's repeated. Man can never fix the problem of broken man. They just keep breaking. So then we get to the final, maybe the greatest example ever displayed in future history of man breaking man and man turning his back on God. Revelation 24 through 10. Okay. Oh, man. Here we go. And I saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God who had not worshiped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years, but the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand, thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection blessed and holy is, is he who has part in the first resurrection over shall Okay. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now then the thousand years have expired. Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are on the four corners of the earth. Again, boy. So I ain't gonna let you finish out, but my point in reading that is at the top of this segment, I talked about man falling, civilization falling, governments, blah, 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 over and over again. And, and we see God move. We see God right here. The last time that this is going to happen, Jesus himself is going to come and sit on the throne and rule and reign in person for a thousand years. What else? What else? Come on. You got the da, da, da. Da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> You know I know what you're about to say. And <laughs> at the end of the thousand years, he's gonna release not only not only is he gonna rule and reign, Satan's gonna be in prison for these thousand years. You're gonna get to witness the fullness of God. Right. The love. Then he's going to release Satan one last time in the war and to deceive the nations. And they will be deceived. Those Not everybody, who, yeah. but those who again, darkness, man, turn his back. I'm telling you, that's that's like a that's like a pot, a pot made for destruction. Just a thought, you know, <laughs> even after the thousand years of God ruling and reigning with men on earth himself men will follow the, de the desires of their heart and follow their flesh right into the grave right into the grave and that ladies and gentlemen is why we need a savior amen hey, so, man. Hey, man. so, that. so hey, that's man. what I got for respect hey, the process basically the moral of the story of respect in the process is keep your eyes on kingdom Stay rooted and grounded in kingdom mm -hmm. because this world is going to be corrupt and broken until it is done away and New Jerusalem is established. Don't never look for man to get it right because man turned their back on God time and time again. He's going to turn his back on God in the greatest way. He going to turn his back on God to his face hey, and I wanna, say, I don't want you. I want to I right. yay this one. Man, you don't got the answers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jesus got the answers. That's right. right. That's real good. I like that. That's right. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Thank you, Rico. Yeah. Appreciate that. Man. Reset Amen. These. Yeah. Reset these.